at this, right? Look at this. You beauty. That's Bondo Beach. Just takes your breath away and puts everything to the This is an amazing walk right by the beach. So this is where the Jewish community lives. From Bondi to Kuji Beach. Pretty ripper, eh, mate? is about the same as the outside temperature, about 67 degrees. And it's clean, it's not all polluted. This was LA, you'd have all these homeless living under the rocks. Now we have us here. here so I've been a little self-conscious about taking my gimbal around I haven't seen anyone carrying a selfie stick so it's out for a walk during adult things and I just think about what narcissism is good because without some narcissism I wouldn't be making these videos like who the heck am I to be giving my cutting-edge insights into life right I'm, I'm irrelevant I'm, I'm nobody I'm just a, another bloke and so as I've been navigating Australian bureaucracy and uh, seeing how my peers are so much more adult and mature and got things together and well, my brother and sister are just so far ahead of me and that like ordinary adult competency it's uh, taken a toll on my narcissism so I haven't made any videos recently because I'm just like trying to navigate the bureaucracy so as soon as I navigate the Aussie bureaucracy I got my Australian bank account set up I got my Australian phone number set up I'm getting an Australian tax file number tomorrow. As soon as I get Medicare, I get everything lined up, and then I'll feel like confident, and then I'll feel confident, and then I'll be like back making videos again. But while I'm struggling with ordinary adult tasks, 
it's hard to find the confidence to like, give you my cutting edge insights into you know, what sort of refugees Australia should take or you know, observances about Australian and American differences. Because uh, when I'm struggling, I don't have, don't have the narcissism picked up. So narcissism is not a state, it's a condition. It's not a condition, it's a state. And it's variable, it depends on circumstances. So for years I hardly made any videos. So between 2012 and 2015, I hardly made any videos. Because I was struggling in life. And when you're struggling in life, it's hard to have the, you know, the grandiose vision that you've got something important to say. So I stopped making videos. It wasn't until I was encouraged by Vivian, who I met on Facebook, I kind of inspired by my conversations with her, I started making videos with Ruby in 2015 and kind of got my confidence back. And 40 got his confidence back, which means a little bit of uh, narcissism back, right? So desire for some attention and admiration, it can be healthy in, in appropriate doses. Without it, you know, no one's going to perform publicly. So what do we got here? Cool, busy, busy intersection. Better pay full attention. I didn't mean to come here for a holiday, right? And I came out on Friday morning, woke up for about 3 a.m. My first day in Sydney. At the house about 5:30 uh, a.m. when it's still dark. I was only co intending to come here for a holiday. And I get out there and I see this. It's just amazing. I just came out for a walk and I thought I should live here. This is the place for me. I'm out there at 5.30 a.m. Dozens of people are out here jogging and getting fit. It's just so clean and safe and cohesive, friendly. And you can wear a yarmulke. No one's giving you heaps here. I only came here for a holiday, but I'm gonna end up staying, mate. That can be able to rip me away from this place. Okay. I think I had a life changing experience of them live on my stream. So you can see from Friday morning live stream here during the course of the stream. I'm changing. I came here for a holiday. I'm deciding to spend the rest of my life here. So I was talking to a lot of friends and uh, the sponsor and, and trying to find out what blind spots I might have. Like, what was I missing? And uh, we quoted the old maxim, like no one on the deathbed says, oh, I wish I'd spent more time with the office. People want to spend more time with family. And I got family right here. In Australia, mate. I had a brother and a sister, uncles, nieces, cousins, aunties, and friends from childhood, and new friends that I've made online, and a thriving Jewish community, lots of shoes where I feel very comfortable. I just walked along this ocean path and I was just broken in two by the beauty and the high quality of the life here. I thought I'm not leaving. I gotta stay here. How does those how do those surfers elevate like a foot off the ocean? See that bloke? Wow.
Like Australia doesn't really have the culture wars that America does. Like, not much controversy over abortion. Black Lives Matter. Please. Australians are too relaxed. They just want to have a barbie. Go to the beach. And sit in the cricket ground. Be with their mates. Have a drink. Make some money. So if uh, culture wars in America is say uh, a 10 out of 10, then uh, culture wars in Australia they're like a uh, like a two or a three out of 10. I mean, when it came to COVID, it was basically a bipartisan consensus. So both the ruling coalition and the opposition Labour Party governed on consensus with regard to COVID. Hey, g'day, Jim, how are you, mate? Thank you for your hospitality, man. Jim's been showing me right around Sydney, getting to meet the people who matter. Been a very hospitable host. Ah, oh, high quality drinking fountains here, mate. Hmm. So I'm at uh, St. Mary's Cathedral. Look at that. Look at that. In downtown Sydney, the Central Business District. Pretty flash. I think this is the, I assume this is the biggest cathedral in Australia. So the Anglican church is near here. It's the oldest, I think, uh, church in Australia. But uh, this is the Central Business District. All right. All the excitement of the city, but uh, all the beauty of the country. How's it going, mate? Good, Joseph. Ah, oh, wonderful. I'm a tourist. That's correct. It's just amazing. So we got a crash here. So Christmas here is the middle of summer. So don't don't expect uh, many snowflakes here. But uh, it's been weird weather, just cloudy, overcast, rainy. My my entire year. And uh, it's been a little challenging for me to live stream because I've switched from vacation mode where I'm just like confident in my vacation to I'm gonna move here. So I'm spending my days navigating bureaucracy. I just set up an Australian bank account. I'm about to get an Australian phone. I'm uh, gonna register for Medicare here in Australia. I'm going to get a tax file number so I can work. I've been polishing my resume. As soon as I get an Aussie phone number, I'll attach that to my uh, resume and send it out. So, so no longer like carefree vacation mode, kick back do what I like. Now it's like I'm adulting, taking on adult responsibilities, bank account, Medicare, health insurance, health coverage phone, tax file number, get a job, be an adult. So it's interesting during this transition, I don't have, I don't have like you know, the confidence and the cockiness that it takes to do good live streams. Because I'm just uncertain, uncertainly, awkwardly, with frequent failure, like navigating Australian government bureaucracy. Oh yeah, I got an Opal card so I can 
so I can ride public transport here in Australia and like learning how to use the bus, learning how to use the train. It's always this like light rain, just finding my way around. So this is Hyde Park where all the nutters are. They're supposed to be O-rating, but look at that. What a magnificent cathedral. So there goes an ambulance. I pray that the ambulance gets to the hospital on time so that everyone's alright. Central Bis Business District. Where's the graffiti? Where's the crime? Where's the menace? Where are the squeegee men? Where's the dysfunction? And where's my cockiness and the confidence that it takes to live stream? Right? It's uh, hard to be cocky and confident when you're trying to figure out the bureaucracy and uh, what it takes to be a functioning adult in Australia. Just might move here. No one's around because of the rain and the COVID. Ah, oh, is that where everyone is? So many flash shops. And I see, and I can just imagine they've been devastated by the COVID. Like there's so much money sloshing around here. And then we had the lockdowns, devastating business. But, uh, it's hard to get on here and get all cocky and confident and tell you this is the way things are. Because I'm just awkwardly figuring out how to use the ferry, how to use the tram, how to use the train, how to use the bus, how to make your way in the big city, in the big smoke. Set up, I got lunches the next three days. See my mates, you see my best mate from childhood best mate and a uh, new mate that I never met but uh, just talked to on Facebook and on his podcast I believe and then uh, I'll have to meet up again with Jim Bowden and uh, see what Jim Bowden's plans are for me. I'm thinking about going to Bondi tomorrow that's where most of the kosher restaurants are I went to see my ancestor Michael Dyer, the, the famous Irish reprobate, rebel, and fighting against the British. So I saw his, his grave, just up from Fuji, and it's the biggest grave in the whole cemetery. So Henry Lawson's buried there, all sorts of big names buried there overlooking the ocean. But Michael Dyer, my ancestor, whose blood still runs through my veins, still powering rebellious attitude and I paid homage visited his grave got in contact with my own you know Michael Dyer so great news guys uh, the Prime Minister said that they're, they're going to take um, 3,000 Afghan refugees but that's the floor that's not the ceiling guys think about how Afghan refugees are going to make this country much more vibrant so more refugees are on the way. So Australia hasn't allowed any, in any immigrants over the past 18 months, but they're starting to open the doors to make overseas students, overseas travelers from South Korea and Japan, and they're starting to up their refugee intake. So this place is so boring without Somalis and Afghans coming around to just liven things up. So it's interesting in the news coverage that nothing about how these refugees will be a benefit to Australia. It's all about Australia's humanitarian concerns. Right? All about doing good for the refugees, but what about the refugees doing good for Australia? That doesn't seem to come up. It's not even a concern. Like in order to talk about refugee intake, there's nothing, no one bothers to make the case how this will be good for Australia. What about Australia, mate? What about Australia? Does, does Australia have any interest here? Right? Does, does Australia have anything at stake here? 
Is it okay for Australia to ask, okay, how are these refugees going to benefit us? Like, do they have valuable job skills that native Australians don't have? The government sets wage rates by determining how much immigration you have. Right? The more immigration, like the lower wage rates go. So, yeah, if you're an average Aussie, you're not so average Aussie. Being charitable in a way that enhances your country. They were people with valuable job skills that, say, the natives don't have. There was some god awful fire in Sydney that killed four Somali kids. So, I don't know, were the parents derelict? Who was derelict? Ah, Josh Randall, how are you, mate? You got Australia envy? We're gonna, we're gonna assemble the whole crew here and we're gonna go on a walkabout. But uh, I'm just wondering, did the, the Somali family do something wrong? I mean, poor Somali kids going up in smoke. Australia's not benefited at all from African immigration? That can't be true. That sounds racist, mate. I'm sure that there are many ways, bountiful ways, considerable ways, that Australia's benefited from African immigration. Just walkabout streams are the best. I didn't bring my selfie stick. I'm a little self-conscious because I'm the only person I've seen in Australia carrying around a selfie stick. And uh, spending most of today doing adult tasks. I've set up a, my bank account this morning, my Aussie bank account. Now I've got to link it to my PayPal. So start funneling the money into Australia. You plan to visit other states? Yeah, I plan to go to Queensland, right? Queensland. But you have to take a PCR COVID test costs $150 just to enter Queensland. Selfie sticks are the day. Yeah, I'm the only one walking around with a selfie stick. I, I feel like I'm being a, a, an ugly American. Yeah, PCR tests are like 150 bucks. Like it's 185 in Los Angeles. Yeah, just flip a coin. I'm triple vaxxed, man. I'm triple vaccinated. I can't even go to synagogue here without showing proof of vaccination. Yeah, Queensland. So yesterday there was something like 120 new cases of COVID in Victoria, about 20 new cases in uh, um, in Sydney, like two new cases in the Northern Territory. Okay. Your thoughts on Australian jury? They seem to be overachievers. That's what they seem to be. They seem to be quite uh, well organized. And uh, I'll, have to, I'll have to learn more. Talk to you later. This is tyranny, I don't want to be free. Now, tyranny means that when you enter a store, you check in with a QBR code. For years. And uh, you wear a mask when you're inside the store. So that's the law. And uh, that's how things roll here in Bondi. Nice little Jewish neighborhood. Very Jewish, very friendly. Been in Australia six days now. I haven't heard a harsh word except from within my own head at times. I've uh, seen quite a few synagogues and Jewish schools. Nice place to be Jewish here. Yeah. restaurants here in Bondi, all the fixings. So one crazy thing I notice, I think it's the same in the UK, probably much of the US, much of the industrialized world, is that they're still obsessed with cleaning surfaces. Right? You're not going to get COVID from a surface. Right? It's airborne transmission. But uh, sometimes there's a condition of entry, you have to, have to use some kind of uh, hand sanitizer. 
and it had the lower level, level staff, which is on the buses and the trains, like cleaning everything, all the services again and again and again. That's not how COVID is transmitted, you know that's not how COVID is transmitted. So, it's a bit irrational. But uh, early on in the pandemic, right, we heard about, oh, COVID can linger on surfaces for this many hours. We have to scrub and clean, and deep clean, and deep COVID cleaning services were offered. And uh, COVID doesn't linger on the surfaces in a dangerous way. It's airborne transmission. So. Wearing a mask seems like common sense to me. When you're inside around other people. Australia's got about 150th of the per capita death rate in the States. So I'd say they've done a pretty good job with their COVID restrictions, but haven't done anything really that other countries haven't done. They just enjoy many advantages. So we don't really know what it is. We don't really know why. We don't have a strong grasp on why some places have high COVID death rates and other places don't. Oh. That looks like a nice walk up the hill. Let's see how I do, mate. Overlooking uh, Bondi Beach. It's our nice Abad synagogue welcoming Mashiach street here. So, not getting any abuse out and about wearing my yarmulke. So pretty much every, every shop you go into, they have like the lowest level employees who stand at the door and make sure you check in. And often use hand, hand sanitizer, check in on your smartphone. And wear, wear a mask while you're inside. And I don't hear that much grumbling on the street. So I know there was a big protest and Central Business District of Sydney on Saturday, so they have these freedom protests. But overall, it seems like the restrictions are fairly popular. Now, I tell everyone I meet that Sydney seems like a really well run place. The government's working on behalf of its citizens. But all the Sydney siders have lots and lots of complaints. I see a city where the trains and the buses run on time and garbage gets picked up. Where everything's lush, abundant parks. What a gorgeous golf course in Bondi. Wow. So, I've been hanging out in the western suburbs, so these are the most expensive places in Australia. So you can allow the prices to discriminate so that you don't have to. And uh, Queensland's opening up. Maybe I have to pop up to Queensland about three weeks and you no longer have to Get that $150 PCR test to show that you're COVID negative to cross over into Queensland. So, I see quite a few Muslims out in full Muslim regalia. 
Uh, this must be a much more multi courty Australia than the one I left behind in 1977. Haven't heard any racial or religious abuse or ordered anyone. It's just not on here on the eastern suburbs, mate. Such, such language and behavior would show you to be low class. This better be a great, great view at the top here, mate. It better be beaut. To justify my exertions. Hey, so far I've been after walk pretty much everywhere I want to go. Which is nice. Not once have I felt any sense of menace. You're going to join a sports club, play a bit of cricket? Oh, I think I'm more of a commentator, mate. Yeah, well, I'm getting in shape. Getting in shape to become a lifeguard. A few more weeks in Australia, I'll be able to run up this hill, mate. Oh. So where's the trash? Where's the graffiti? Where are the rival gangs? People go to the beach here, they leave their phones, their wallets, their purses, their laptops, right on the beach, go for a dip, come back, everything's still there. Lifeguards, I don't look out for people in the sea. Yeah, so look out for thieves. Seems to have done a pretty effective job discouraging them. So was it, that oh, was Cronulla. Yeah, the Cronulla riots. There's native Australians versus the Lebanese. So that's a few miles from here. About 15 miles from here. 20. No rioting going on in the eastern suburbs. We're too posh. Very Anglo names around here, Victory Street. So, meanwhile in Charlottesville, big, uh, big defeat for the old right. So all the defendants lost the civil suit, right? Not that they have any money to pay up, but those judgments will be hanging over them for the rest of their lives. Also, it doesn't look good. So, did the alt-right acquit itself in glory at Charlottesville? I don't think so. No doubt it's been a really bad idea. So, Charlottesville reminds me of the situation I got into in late August or early September of 1988. I was at UCLA and I had arrived a month early before the dormitories opened up. And there was a big tennis tournament going on at UCLA. So I didn't want to spend the money. So I climbed this outcrop, watched the tennis for free. And then as the tournament progressed, he started sending security guards to run us out of the outcrop. So I was there watching the match for free with some other blokes. And uh, security came up and security said we have to leave. And as he was saying that, he slipped on the edge of the parapet. It's a very substantial fall down to the ground. And uh, like he could have lost his life. And I might have played a role in all of that. Because if I hadn't been up there, I wouldn't have been up there. Security wouldn't have been up there. So you hold an event, unlikely to have complete control of who comes. And so to then bear some responsibility for bad behavior. 
of blokes like uh, Fields. So my full interview with Dr. Andrew Fraser is on my Rumble account. So you have more free speech on Rumble than you do on YouTube. So YouTube gave me a strike. I thought I'd, I had definitely put that Andrew Fraser interview on private on YouTube just so that I could download it. And uh, somehow it ended up public and very quickly got a strike. So that's why I'm not streaming on my other channel. Oh, 41 minutes, that's all I did, right? So I primarily made a social call on Andrew Fraser. So the interview was secondary. Charlottesville journey was all from the town. Yeah, they were doing from the start, right? So you're not only responsible for your deeds, you bear some responsibility for the repercussions of your deeds. Yeah, I just ended it uh, so that uh, Andrew could enjoy his dessert, so everyone could enjoy their dessert. So I primarily paid a social call on Andrew Fraser and his wife. And a uh, quick interview was just, just a little something on the side. Uh, this view better be worth it, mate. Looking forward to a spectacular look into the Pacific Ocean here. Just saw a book on the history of the Pacific Ocean. Like, how do you write a history of the Pacific Ocean? And in 1829, there was a tide that was unusual. I flew Fiji Airlines to Australia. Yeah, it didn't matter where the jury was from with the news coverage. So we flew over on Fiji Airlines, but uh, we weren't just following twigs and patterns in the wave and navigating from the sun. We had full professional instruments. Ah, oh, this is nice. The Rodney Reserve. Many people don't realize that this is... Many people don't realize that the Rodney Reserve is named after Rodney Martin for his contributions to humanity. Maybe we'll get in some Aussie rules. First test cricket match is going to be at the Gabba in Brisbane in about two weeks. Ashes match. Hey, no, not after Rodney King, mate. Okay. What have we got here? Ah, oh, this is beautiful. So, about uh, 12 hours flight going east to west will take me to Los Angeles. I think it's only 12 hours back home. Well, to fly straight from Los Angeles to Sydney is about 15 hours. About to have a late lunch at a kosher restaurant in Bondi. Oh, that breeze off the ocean, mate. It's tough. under a police state, mate. Go to Hungry Jack's and get yourself a veggie whopper. I don't think that place is kosher, mate. 
He just support the Jewish community. I've been out my wallet. Australian dollar, it's like a kangaroo dollar. It just really jumps far over here. Right? 72 American cents gets you one Australian dollar. Good place to raise kids if you can afford it. It's safe. Kids can ride public transport. You can go play and muck around. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to turn it off right now. Sorry, mate. This place is gorgeous. Look at this. Look at this golf course. Oh. Look at gorgeous, gorgeous golf course. Man, I want to play a few holes. I don't think I've played golf in 20 years, but just looking at this. I want to go play again, man. What a ripper golf course. Here in Bondi. What a beautiful Jewish community here, man. Some lovely city. Oh, mate, my, my lunch. Had uh, late lunch at Peter Mix. I had the, had the vegetarian burger and it was so good. Oh, so there's Peter Mix. There's a series of uh, kosher restaurants. Bondi. I'm walking along the, the core of the community right now and uh, the beach is about a kilometer to my left. So it's a really it's not just a cohesive Australian community, it's, it's a cohesive Jewish community as well. The, the rabbis get along like they work together. During the lockdown they, they organized uh, Shefa blowing on Rosh Hashanah uh, in the park. So to reduce risk of COVID, so like the Sydney rabbis you know, emphasize that more the land is more to the Jew. Talmudic dictate still applies in 2021. So you do the shofar blowing in the park for 10 minutes, then everyone goes home. Social distances. So very little spread of COVID in the Australian community and the Jewish community. Now in Sydney. There was a fringe of a fringe group that disregarded lockdown rules. I think they got fined about 5,500 Australian each disregarding the rules. That's very rare in the Jewish community and not how things are done here in Sydney. They buy the block, obey the law of the land, observe the lockdown. And uh, it's just a wonderful thing to see how cohesive the Sydney Jewish community was, and not just with reaction to COVID, but in general. It's uh, about as scandal free a community as you'll find. Like, rabbis don't allow their egos to get in the way, and working with all the rabbis, all the rabbis here, they work together to build a safe, cohesive community. And uh, maybe the Maybe the relaxed Australian attitude also affects the Jewish community, so there's not a lot of feuding here in Sydney. Not that rival rabbis aren't uh, going, going at it. Uh, so there's about 80%, as I understand it, of Sydney's Jews live in the eastern suburbs. So those are the poshest communities by the, by the beach. They're, Children of children of Holocaust survivors from Central Eastern Europe. And a lot of South African Jews have moved here. So they tend to be entrepreneurial, highly accomplished, highly educated, uh, law-abiding, 
and uh, they contribute enormously to the tax base because when they send their kids to private Jewish schools, they're still funding the public schools. They're when you're a doctor, a lawyer, a dentist, an accountant, an entrepreneur, you pay a disproportionate amount of tax and you're not using the social services nearly as much because you send your kids to a private Jewish school and a Jewish community takes care of its own. Right? So it finds jobs for people, it helps people. And I love, love, love my first experience here in the Bondi Jewish community. Much of a friend just went on a grand walkabout. And uh, even, even though things are pretty chill and they don't, don't notice any overt racial or religious hostility here in the recent suburbs, still the uh, security is excellent on top of things. But no slackness there in the security. When I, I grew up in Seventh-day Adventist, and so we didn't have security. Right? We didn't have to have law enforcement showing up to our, our churches and we didn't have to use metal detectors and background checks on people coming to church but uh, that's something I learned when I converted to, to Judaism is the much greater threat and, and as a result <clears throat> the more measures you have to take to keep things safe and these measures are just steadily escalating particularly after the shooting in Pittsburgh the uh, synagogue that left about 10 people dead and then another shooting in Bowway a year after that. So that then ripples out to have effects in the community worldwide. But what can we do? Instead of just relying on the kindness of strangers and relying on law enforcement, what can we do to look after ourselves? And this thing has such a healthy attitude. Every community should have that kind of mindset. What can we do to look after ourselves? What can we do to plug our weaknesses? What can we do to protect our community? What can we do to help our community? What can we do to revitalize our community? What can we do to help our community prosper? And if there are elements in the community that are causing trouble, you know, what can we do to solve those problems? So Sydney's Jewish community is like a light under the nation tonight. Really impressed by everything I see in here. Australia's had uh, pretty selective immigration, probably the sanest immigration policy of any of the Anglo nations. So, overwhelmingly, people who immigrate here are educated, they have skills, they're entrepreneurial, they, they bring something to the table, and they, as a result, build a prosperous life here. And as a result of that, they pay a lot of tax and subsidize the social services for those who need them. So there are lots of Chabad Lubavitch synagogues in Bondi. And then there's another Orthodox Jewish community up, uh, up north. So this is the primary Sydney Jewish community along Old South Head Road, which is where I'm walking now, inside the golf course. I love golf. Like it attracts the best sort of people, man. People who play golf, they tend to be nice, they tend to be polite, they tend to follow the rules, they tend to be law abiding, they tend to be ethical, they tend to hold themselves to account. They take uh, cognizance of the effects of their choices on other people. Golfers are the best. Been a while since I've been out there golfing. Just a good type of people. I 
both attracts the best kind of people and then develops their character. Have your tequilon see the light of day in Australia? Of course, mate. Got to get connected to that great power source, the Almighty. Now that's the best power source. People like 40 desperately need a power greater than themselves because my power is weak. My, my power shuts off way too often. I have to plug into the great power generator in the sky, creator of heaven and earth. So a lot of people in Sydney say, oh, the traffic is as bad as LA. Yeah, not quite. Not quite. This is like a peaceful country town. It is, I guess it's about 5 p.m. So I'm looking for the ocean. I want to take a pleasant ocean hike. Perfect time of day to go to the ocean. So the temperature here is varied between about 60 degrees and 70 degrees. It's rained pretty much every day, only lightly. All right, here's a good size intersection. So I think we're about a kilometer from the beach. Bondi Beach, right? Yeah, Jacaranda in bloom. Good infrastructure for Jewish community here, everything you need. It's like kosher stores, or mikvahs, or synagogues, or schools. How they even have their own live streamer. This is the only selfie stick I've seen in Australia, right? So, afraid of being anti social, right? Not very Aussie to walk around with a selfie stick. But Australians are pretty tolerant. People, she'll be right, mate. It's kind of the Aussie ethos. Okay, here we go. No worries. So, when I was talking to Aussies in Los Angeles, they complained about how when they go to shul, they'd always get verbally abused. They're wearing distinctive garb and wearing a yarmulke. But everyone I talk to here says that, that doesn't happen. So talking to Jews here, never experienced being verbally abused, being Jewish, and uh, having encountered you know, visceral anti-Jewish hatred. So by and large, Jews and Muslims live in different parts of Sydney. So the Muslims live more in the western suburbs, where the real estate is cheaper. The Jews live in the eastern suburbs, where the real estate is more expensive. Oh, a lot of roundabouts. There are a lot more roundabouts than traffic lights. So I think America is going to start using uh, roundabouts. There was a big article in the New York Times about one mayor. You know, I think he'd been to Europe and he saw all the roundabouts. He thought, good idea. So apparently roundabouts reduce dangerous collisions. Oh, you yeah, mate. on the way to the beach. So 
So we're dealing with Australian bureaucracy and it's very particular. So it can be a bit of a pain to get your, your Medicare sorted out, roundabouts of the commies, and your tax file number, so you can start working. You can't bring enough documents, and only had two documents. They wouldn't accept the documents on my phone. It had to be hard copies. So I get a tax file number at the Australian Post Office. But once you're in, you're in, mate. A little bit like Orthodox Judaism. Not easy to break into as an outsider, right? Bit of a test when you convert. Bit of a challenge for some lady in the community. But uh, once you're in, you're in, mate. And you're amongst family. Okay. My sister was right, I should have worn a hat. A lot of sun out today. Didn't slap on enough sunscreen. Look out for your mates and your mates look out for you. Yeah, that's the Aussie ethos, mate. So, what's the, what's the saying? Slip on a shirt, slap on a hat, slap on some sunscreen. Slip, slop, slip, slap, slop. That's the, uh, that's the Aussie public service announcements to reduce skin cancer. That's with the glasses. I like to be able to see clearly, right? So much gorgeous scenery here. The birds are amazing. So I heard some kookaburras the other day, I felt right at home. I'm not a vain man, right? Oops, I think I can run. Okay, here we go. flag. Wow, this whole neighborhood's happening, mate. Just bursting with life and vitality. Just getting back to it <clears throat> after lockdown ended about five weeks ago. So crowds are returning. I believe we're going to have four crowds at the test cricket matches, the Ashes against England. So tons of cafes and coffee houses and new thing in Australia the last couple of decades. Less beer drinking, more wine drinking, more coffee drinking. So the Sydney Jewish community definitely punches above its weight. Like very successful, hardworking, accomplished, educated, influential. Uh, deeply Zionist, committed to Israel. Fund a lot of institutes. Think tanks, like the Lowy Institute. Is that Lowy Institute the number one institute in Australia, mate? Oh, Sheila's. Everyone in eastern suburbs seems so fit. So I saw on the news that uh, Australians had become as fat as Americans. I don't see that in the eastern suburbs. I haven't seen one fat person in the eastern suburbs. Everyone's fit. Like you come out to the beach, 5, 6 a.m. Everyone's out jogging, young, old, men, women. Out getting fit. I don't see one fat, fat person in the eastern suburbs, mate. Like I thought Australia had become a nation of fatties. And uh, 
I'm not seeing it here on the eastern suburbs. So it's also true with like West LA, you don't see many fat people too. So this uh, feels like West LA, except without the crime, without the homelessness, without the graffiti, without general antisocial behavior, without the loud music booming out of cars, without gangs disrupting shopping centers.